drying. What's going on, guys? Simon here once again. We are trying to get the technical difficulties here. I am in the underground basement because I'm getting ready underground with great man, great musician here in just a few moments. If we can get this cooperating. I don't understand what's going on. What's going on, Robert Stanley? Jamie Miller, thank you guys for hanging out with me. Bear with me, guys. I got a lot of got a real great guest coming up here in just a few moments. Once I can get this technical issue to cooperate, we're working on it as fast as we can. The guy I'm going to have with tonight, Mr. Boogie, Boogie Ball Bounce. A lot of you guys see me sharing this stuff. A lot of you guys remember Miss Melody Madrox. That entrance that was custom done by the gentleman I will be having on here in just a few moments. And thank you for the thumbs up, Mr. Jamie Miller. Please hang tight with us as we are trying to get this technical issue squared away. Everything worked earlier. And of course, it's usually how it goes. Everything runs nice until you get ready to go with it full force. There's the man right there. I see you watching, Bounce. Where you at, man? For some reason, it's not letting me in. We're here in just a few moments. <laughs> see if we can get this to cooperate. Man, why is Facebook being so wonky tonight, man? But like I said, we got a lot of great stuff. I got a lot of cool questions. I got a lot of good information we're going to get out of him. Hopefully. I'm rolling, brother. Are you laughing at me now, Bounce? <laughs> For some reason, this is not cooperating with me. Let's try something here. Aha! I think I just got it set up for it. What's going on, Kilgore? Hey, if any of you guys know anybody who's in the hip-hop game, which I know, Kilgore, I know you got a lot of people that are into that kind of stuff. Stay, tell them to come check this out, and you need to stay tuned because Mr. Boogie Ball Bounce, he's got a big opportunity coming up for some local talent, and he's got a radio station we're going to talk about later on, too. We're trying to... It's trying to get to you, brother. And I don't understand why I am having so much. Why this worked earlier today, guys. I promise you we were doing this, making some tests, and everything worked flawlessly. And for some reason now, hey, there he is. Mr. Boogie there Ball. There you go. <laughs> There we go. Gotta, gotta love technical issues, man. How you doing, brother? Man, doing wonderful, doing wonderful. Thank you for having me. Let me see if I get this dude, situated. Thank, dude, I want to thank you, honestly, man. Literally, this is amazing. Thank you for allowing me to interview you and come on here with me. I, I mean, I've been hearing your stuff for a hot minute. You know, for those mm. of you who don't know, for those of you that don't know who this man is, one, get yourself out the rock that you've been living under and go check <laughs> out Bounce. Go check out Bounce107.com where you can find this man. We're going to talk about that here in just a, in just a minute. But really quick, I, man, I got a bunch of stuff. We got people that have asked some questions. And if it's okay with you, whoa, you froze on me. What happened to you? Are you there, brother? Yeah, uh, there we go. I think I'm here. <laughs> we'll blame it on the um the ozone or something. We'll blame we'll blame somebody. All right, good. Just don't blame me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Dude, I have been prepared. I have show notes. And for those of you that don't know me, I hate show notes. But I've got them for you. We're going to make sure we get this we get all this out. Let's get so, it out, man. All right, real quick. 
Okay, for some reason, we're having trouble hearing you. I'm not sure if it's on my end. Okay. Okay, I got I got my producer's – Test these. One, two, three. Uh, uh, if you've got three of them, you need to go get that check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I my... guess that's how I, that's how I got six kids, yo. <laughs> I'm locked and loaded. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Really quick. We're going to, man, we're just going to rapid fire a bunch of quick questions. So I hope you're ready. Holy shit. Rapid fire? Yeah, man, just give me some quick answers. Real quick questions. I mean, just try to get people who don't know who you are. We're going to learn a little bit about you tonight. That's okay. All right. Well, let's do it. I'll let my nuts hang. All right. Let's let them hang low. How many, <laughs> tattoos, how many tattoos and piercings you got, brother? Wow. Piercings, I only got two, two piercings in my ears. Tattoos, I would say over 30. Wow. When did you get you your first one? We don't you need don't to know about. <laughs> 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 Dang. When, when when how old were you when you got your first one? My my first tattoo? Yeah. Uh 14. Oh wow, okay. So you've had them for you you've been getting them for a hot minute. A hot minute. I'm 34 now. <laughs> so uh same age as me. Don't give me that now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, my, my first tattoo, it was very unprofessional. Homeboy had a had a needle with thread. And, yeah, I started stabbing, stabbing the hatchet man in my hand. Right there. Oh, right there. Whoop, whoop on that one. Hell, yeah. Got to love whoop. that. Rest- whoop, whoop. Ninjas, man, representing still. Are you, an oh, Xbox yeah. or, are you an Xbox or a PlayStation guy? Xbox. All the way. All right. Got to have my Halo, man. Got to have the Halo. There you go. There you go. Call of Duty, too, so you can't argue with that. Yeah. Now, a lot of people who don't know, you are you are a performer as well, a musician. You've also a producer. You're a promoter. You're a little bit of everything. I'm a what chameleon your, in this game. There you go. What was the most memorable or favorite venue or gig that you've done that stood out in your mind? Uh, I would say the most memorable moment, and I don't even remember the name of the club, but it was in Dallas, uh, in in uh, Deep Alum. I think you know Deep Alum Tech, uh, in Dallas okay. downtown Dallas or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I opened up for uh, KRS One, which wow. which in my opinion is a fucking living legend in the hip hop world. And then uh, it was it was a club. It wasn't like an actual bar venue. It was a hip hop club, and they would it was like a phone club. So that was my first phone club experience wow. as well. And you survived the foam. I survived the foam, bro. And they were like, and they were, I was like tripping over people when I was walking oh. through through the crowd, or whatever. Wow. This shit was yeah, it was trippy, man. But. But I was like maybe 18, 19 when I went out to uh, this event. It was my first paid gig. I did my first interview on on the actual radio out there, and that's back when Paul Wall and uh, Swisher House was really really popping. You know that Southern rap was really yeah. popping then. Wow. So how yeah. was that? How was that? How was that radio compared to? How was that radio interview compared to everything else nowadays? Just just. Were you prepared? Were you not? We just didn't know what no, you were I into, was, or I wasn't prepared at all. To t- tell you the truth, I was I was kind of shy when I when I was younger, because <laughs> I because I was I was still trying to try to figure myself out. You know what I'm saying? I was just still trying to figure out what the hell I'm even what the hell I'm even doing. You know, I knew I wanted to do music. I knew I wanted it, wanted to be on stage, and I was just going with the flow at that time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But now that I have direction and I have a message and I know why I'm doing music, it's a, it's a whole different game. What what was the first horcore that kind of got you hooked to that genre? Violent J. There you go, big whoop whoop. Was it Solo, The Shining, or was it an actual one of the cards? Uh, it was, I mean, when I was in third grade, that was the first time I ever heard of ICP. And um, it was uh, 
it was uh, the Carnival of Carnage album, and I actually stole it. Um, homeboy, <laughs> his homeboy's brother at the time, right? He went to Detroit and, and had had a whole bunch of these CDs, right? And I stole it from him in third grade, and I was I was listening to that shit, and I was like, "What the hell am I listening to?" Wow. For years, bro, it was like that. Was like I and my mom found it eventually and tried to hide it and destroy Uh-oh. it. Yeah, I stole and I had to steal it back from her. <laughs> man, you was just stealing to hear that hear that music, man. Bro, I I, I stole a lot of shit in my life. <laughs> you stole like my daughter, many fans too. <laughs> yeah, well, I definitely tried to, man, and that's and that's why I try to be a. Uh, a voice for them a lot, especially for for young men that are becoming fathers, or whatever. Because my daughter, her her first year, I stole all her diaper supply, just because wow. I didn't have the money coming in, and I went to to the family dollar with the freaking <laughs> baby stroller, put a blanket over it, and I was just whoop 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 whoop, jumped on the RTD bus and took it all the way home. <laughs> there you go. What was when it comes to the music? I know. I mean, I'm bouncing around a little bit, and I apologize. It's just kind of like I said, I'm a little scatterbrained. I got notes. I'm trying to stay focused. So, the king of bounce. <laughs> I think that's where I got. I think I'm getting it from you, man. You're rubbing off on me. <laughs> when it comes to the, like all the songs, videos that you've done, what was one of the? I don't want to say your favorite or most memorable. What was one that really stuck out or meant the most? to you and what you do um well as, as you see and you see me progress i, I try to give 100 percent in everything i do to every song to every video but the one that i enjoyed the most creating was i'm your demon where you see me painted up and i'm kind of all drip dripping in blood and i'm working with chuckles uh, the headhunted clown from San Jose, which he's been my he's been the, the coolest dude to to collaborate with so far, just because him and I like have the same mental <laughs> the no, way we same same yeah, wavelengths, psychotic wave. <laughs> wow! But um, it, but the, if you watch the video, I mean, it's really demented. It's uh. You see there's a couple arguing or fighting because of drug abuse. And at the end, you see me put up, uh, if you're having drug addiction, call this number for help. Because it, the song is about fighting your demons. You're fighting your demons to to, to beat addiction or beat whatever you're you're uh, struggling with. So, so sometimes man, everyone you has that. Negativity for a positive message, you know what I'm saying? There you go. And that is, as long as, to me, as long as it reaches one person, and they call that number, you've done your job, you know? That's that's, right. that's the way I look at things. Even if it reaches just one person when it comes right. to that, and, you know, when you're able to save one. And, you know, Ashley, she's yeah. sitting there saying that, that video had a great meaning behind it, at which, you know, it, like I said, if it touches one person or helps one person, then. Absolutely. Um, I my, I mean, and I've got my producer on the side, Miss Melody Madrox, who we're gonna we're gonna talk about her and you here in just hey, a few minutes. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> and, she actually, and she actually just put the link. If you guys are watching live here on Facebook, there's a link that just dropped up that you'll see it will actually take you to that video. I recommend watching it after the interview here. Don't run now, because we got a lot of stuff we still gotta talk about. Some artists that you wish. What's your wish list or your dream collaboration? What's the what's the you know some artists that you would want to collaborate with? Past, I mean, present, alive or dead? Woo! woo. <laughs> I told wow. you I was I told you I was prepared, man. You didn't believe me. I was like, whoa! <laughs> really, really. Um, all right, I'll give you alive and dead. Um, alive wise. The two artists I would love to work with, like today, would be Violin J and Isham. Only because wow. I know if I was to do a track with with these guys, they would challenge. It would be a challenge for me lyrically. 
because I want to be just as as uh, uh, I just want to be you know just be just as good as them and be able to tell a story just as well as, as they do. So those would be two artists alive, but dead would be either either Easy E or Michael Jackson. Oh wow, Michael! Really, Michael Jackson? Wouldn't it be dope to have Michael Jackson on a hook, bro? I'm like, dude. That I mean, would I've be always dope. said, I've always said, and people give me a lot of shit because I'm a huge Michael Jackson fan, even with the Jackson Five and afterwards. <laughs> Musically, that man was. You know, the way he wrote was just, yeah, mind blown, dude. Everything was just awesome. Um, just Let's see. You were talking about your family earlier on. You know, do they support you with this? I mean, was there any, I don't want to say backlash or any, you know, <laughs> any, any slap back from, you know, making the full decision to go with this? I mean. Well, my – I mean, when you talk about, like, my immediate family, like my mom and father or whatever, whatever, my, my father dissed me when I was when I was young. And um, I, I grew up really in a gang environment. So I in my, in, my, in my music, you always hear me talking about the streets was my father. I learned how to be a man off, off of other people's mistakes. And my mom, mother, she's never... She's never liked my music. <laughs> really? she's never watched, yeah, she's never been supportive to this day. Never been wow. supportive uh, of my music. But uh, the beautiful Mercer's Mayhem, my, my mother, the mother of my children, my fiance, my soon to be wife, she's behind me 100%. My kids, I try to get my kids involved as much as possible. And now that they're growing older, you know, what I mean, they're they're right at that that teenager stage. I'm starting yeah. to see things come coming out of them, and I've seen so it. I'm have, trying to focus a little been. bit. Like, come on, let's get rapping. <laughs> <laughs> trying to poke them into the business. Now they've been in some of your videos, have they not? Yeah, um, yeah. When you see the, the the kids with the masks be behind me, those those are my kids. They're right there with me on stage. They sing a couple of the hooks on on my album Greed. So I'm definitely trying to influence them and kind of show, showing them how fun it is to make music to kind of express uh, express themselves. Okay, because, like, I remember there's one of the tracks that really stood out to me, and that was Ink Me Up. And, <sighs> dude, that <laughs> – I love it. And that's uh, that's why I said, were those your kids in that video with you as well? Yeah, th th those are my sons. They, they went with me to uh, the tattoo convention, which – the tattoo convention here in Colorado is something I've been performing at for the past two, three years. And every time we do it, we just get nothing but mad love. And that video just gets passed on from from tattoo shop to tattoo shop all the way from LA to Denver. Wow. That that's right. awesome. <laughs> Incredible. That's what you call getting mad play. <laughs> <laughs> what was your reaction when it comes to your fans and everything? When you know, when you perform live, what was the first reaction when you did a first live show? What was your initial like? How how did it feel being on stage that first time? On stage, the very first time, it was it was all right. So. That's, that's kind of hard to, to, to explain because the very first time was when I was in, like, fifth grade. Um, my, my grandfather, he used to put me into uh, talent shows and uh, local freestyle battles. Yeah. And that's how I kind of got the feel for the stage. So when I got to the point where I'm like, yo, I'm going to jump on stage, I'm going to showcase my music. I was already at a point where I know I want and need to do this. So it was like, it was like uh, the, the butterfly feeling, you know what I'm saying? It was like when you get that butterfly feeling, one thing that I was always told, if you, if you get that butterfly feeling before doing something, it's worth doing. There you go. And when, if you're nervous, then you know it's going to be good. Because if you go out there and it's, you don't feel anything. You know something bad's gonna happen. Right. It happens with the pro wrestling business as well. 
we always say, you know, if you're not oh, nervous man, going man, out there, I, I always tell them if you're not nervous going before you go out there, don't go out there because you're going to get hurt. You're going to get hurt bad. And, yeah. and when, when you do get out there, it's like you're on top of the world. It's like the oh, one time – it's like the one time where I feel like I'm not being judged, where everyone is, is, is with me. I can feel their energy. They feel mine, and we're just feeding off each other. And for that 20, 30 minutes, it's just pure intensity, nothing but love. And I, got, I don't know if you can see these comments that are flying up here. Uh, Mr. Marshall, who are you wanting to put through a table? You want to put myself or Mr. Bounce Boogie, Boogie Ball Bounce through a table? The guy, guy wanting to put one of us. He's wanting to put one of us through a table. I'm not really sure. I've had my fair share of them. They hurt very badly. <laughs> when you're on the road, when you're on the road, you know we travel a lot, or we did travel a lot. You travel with your stuff. What's the one place you look for when it comes to food? Like when we're on the road, we look for a sheets. That's the that that's the go to after an event. What what's the one thing you look for? after events is there a specific place that you look for man I, I can't say well out here in colorado my first spot is chubby's <laughs> i need I, I like my fucking mexican food man my smothered fries but if i'm in an unknown area like i don't know where the fuck i'm at the place i look for is is the quickest burger joint i'm like one of the biggest burger junkies you can I ever meet <laughs> you come down, I, don't, I don't know if you guys have these things called Five Guys. Do you guys have those out there? We do. <laughs> Dude, I say more. <laughs> I love you all order. five of those motherfuckers. <laughs> and all the damn fries <laughs> that come with it. <laughs> okay. Hell yeah. Got to ask, pineapple on the pizza, yay or nay? Yay. Hell yay. Oh, hell no. Hell no. <laughs> Big. Pineapple does not belong on a pizza, man. Beth, there, Melody, my friend, you are wrong. You're absolutely over wrong. <laughs> Melody's over here just like, yeah, when you answered that. Yeah. One thing I enjoy the most, bro, is pineapple pizza with pineapple fago all up in your face. Okay, I could do the pineapple fago all day, every day, but the pineapple does not belong <laughs> on a pizza. It it does. Pineapple pizza is good, is what she's saying. It does. As you you see, can't tell me if you don't enjoy it. I'll even have <laughs> some pineapple with anchovies. Hold the ham. Whoo! Geo's saying pineapple and bacon, bro. Pineapple and bacon. Hell yeah, there you go. Now that's class. Really quick. Batman or Superman? I got the shirt. Who you got? Batman. Listen, this, this could cause a war. Batman? Okay, we're good. We're good. Batman all the way. Okay, we're good. Okay. <laughs> all right, now, we're done with the rapid fire. I now, got man. Let's, for it too. let's hear a couple. Give me a couple of them. All right. For one, I'm Batman. <laughs> oh, you're Batman? <laughs> you're uh, Batman. Yeah. I'm Fat Man. <laughs> well, that's what happened. That's what happened, right? Like, I was Batman. I had the dope as cape, the dope as belt, and then I got fat, and then I had to sell it to a younger <laughs> motherfucker, and now the younger motherfucker is who you see flying around today. So that young kid, Bruce, just he had a couple extra bucks. He said, here, kid. That's right. So all you know right now, Bounce Ball trained the new Batman. There we go. <laughs> you heard it first. I said, I told you I was going to get some news around here. I told you. <laughs> Uh, I, let's talk about I the, never luck. Let's let's talk about the radio stuff, man. You got a lot going on right now. I mean, right it started out, I believe, with Bounce Boogie Radio, is that right? On Facebook. Or Boogie well, Bounce, Bounce, yeah. I, I know it gets it gets confusing a lot because <laughs> my name is Bounce Ball Boogie and I try to try to I try to brand everything I do based around Bounce Ball Boogie. So what happened was is, all right, it's a long story, but basically at my first gathering, right, I went by myself, and I and throughout all my throughout my life, I've always had this tendency of starting my own gang. 
like I would find the 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 losers or the left out kids at lunch, and I'd be like, "Yo, want have want can I sit down here?" And I would all of a sudden be a loner to having like 10, 20 friends. So at the gathering, I did the same shit, and we came up with this shit called Boogie Bang Gang, right? And there you go. and right, and uh, what happened was is I had a chance to sit down with Violin J in oh, his wow. trailer at the gathering. And I swear, I swear to God, I was in that trailer for like four hours straight. We were smoking. Just learning. Just, just <laughs> talk. He was just, he was just talking and talking and talking and talking, like telling us his whole fucking life story, basically. And um, it was, a, it, it just came a thing in that trailer. He would keep, keep calling us boogie bang, boogie bang, boogie bang. And I was like, that's it. I'm gonna call my shit Boogie Bang, and ever since then I knew I was gonna I want to create a group called Boogie Bang Gang. So I made Boogie Bang Records, which is now a legal company in Colorado, and now I got Boogie Bang Radio, which has been my show. You've been all y'all been watching me on, and I've been trying to highlight underground artists. That's kind of been my thing, and then I got all the way to the point of me owning my own station of Balance 107. You actually, that was the next step. I was just getting ready to ask, how did it evolve from that to Bounce 107? Was it just... And you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't mean to do this radio thing. I was like, I was like, I was just telling my, I was telling the, uh, the beautiful Mercer's Mayhem the other day, I didn't mean to do this radio thing. Like, I wasn't like, say, yo, let's get on the radio. <laughs> it kind of was given to me at a point. And um, when I first started doing it, it was just because we we could. And I mean, we started doing it just because because why not? And then all of a sudden, it started getting more traction. I started getting artists and their music was like crazy. We were getting all this love, and then all of a sudden, and then all of a sudden, promoters were coming at me for for our venues, and all of a sudden, artists were coming at me to get booked on shows. And I mean, it was like a mad thing. It was just snowballing. So now we got all the way. That's how we got to the point of raising enough money to build our own station. There you go. Because I remember we had talked. You, me, and you had talked previously, you know, through message. This is actually the first time me and him have seen face to face and spoke like this. <laughs> Usually, it's just via text message. Um, right. We we had talked about other you know outlets on how because Facebook was just hating the hell out of you for a while. Yeah, I think you spent more it, time it, in Facebook good. jail. <laughs> oh, they still do? They still do. Man. So so what I've learned, and if you've been noticing in my past episodes, my past recent episodes, I should say, I really watch what I say and how I say things. Just because there's specific key words. There's key words and key phrases that you just cannot say. And when okay, you say text it, those to it, me later so I don't say them. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I mean, when you when kicked off. <laughs> I mean, it's it's really a lot a lot of conspiracy type things and controversy because when you talk about all that stuff, they're just like, uh, uh-uh. uh, cut. Wow, that's wow. It's I deep, bro, believe- and I'm like one of the biggest conspiracy theorists that that I know of. Me, me and Mercy, we sit here and just talk about shit we've read, and we try to put knowledge behind it and try to make sense of it. Like, kid, this shit can't be real. It can't be. And then you start dwelling in it. It's like, oh, my God, it, it can't can be. be real. <laughs> wow. And sometimes that that's when some of the most greatest music gets wrote from a conspiracy theorist you have in your head and go, holy hell. Right. So, <laughs> so I mean, when it comes to, the, you know, what made you – I mean, we talked about how you got started in the, you know, in the music business. You kind of evolved into a producer record, very much like the Don over here. You pretty much kind of just naturally evolved. I mean, was it planned in your mind? Did you have a plan that, okay, this is what I want to do? Or did you really just want to stick to the music and just everything else was like, ta-da, yeah, <laughs> you're shaking your head like, "Yep." <laughs> I'm like, "Oh, well, you got it, bro." Like, all all I really want to do is just be an artist because that's what I enjoy the most. That's what I love to do the most. I love writing music. I love creating music. 
I love getting in the studio. I love them performing it. I love promoting it. One thing that 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 you'll find about me is I like to talk about me. And <laughs> I like to talk about my experiences. And that's why I, I enjoy hanging out with my children a lot because they want to hear my stories. <laughs> that's actually Other a good than, thing. Yeah, it is a good thing. And then the cool thing is in the future, I get to tell the same stories over again to my grandkids, which which is going to be awesome. But um, there you go. That's, that's, that's really my thing, man. I really just wanted to be an artist. And um, what happened was I was trying to get radio hosts to give me the time of day and to play my music, and they wouldn't unless I paid them. And I was trying to get promoters. <laughs> right. I was trying to get promoters to book me, and they wouldn't unless I paid Pay them. for the venue. You know what I mean? And so I was like, you know what? I ain't paying you. I'm paying myself, and I can do it better than you. Heck, yeah. Now, speaking of that, I know we got – and I, I mean, Gio's giving me kind of a, he's kind of giving me some insights saying they may cut us if we go a little too long. So we'll kind of jump a little oh, bit. Oh, no, you're good. You can be live as long as four hours. But four I, hours? I, I can't stay four hours. Oh, we ain't going to stay four hours. Dude, I got, I got Batman <laughs> Arkham to play. Uh, <laughs> we got a lot of stuff. I know you got a lot. Like Bounce 107, how can people, uh, there's a gentleman in here right now, he, who said he makes music? He's wanting to get in touch with you. How do people do this? Because Bounce 107, I know you guys are looking for all sorts of musicians, still artists. Yeah, yeah man. We, uh, we, 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 we care to anything that's underground. Um, we're not too big on playing mainstream music because mainstream music already has a platform, which is the bullshit we hear every day in the airwaves. And uh, we try to cater to everything underground as not getting the support that they feel they're getting. Uh, Balance 107 does pay out royalties to every artist and musician that has their work uh, registered with ASCAP, CSAC, BMI, whatever. And so if you have your music registered, you're with all that good stuff, you're going to get your royalties. You can submit your bi biography and your music properly labeled in mp3 format to bounce107radio at gmail.com and that would allow all of our DJs and I will put that when we transfer this over to our YouTube link I will have all of this information that he is giving you guys to where you can reach out because this is kind of one of the reasons I was wanting to get to where we can reach out and help artists underground get seen be heard because mainstream doesn't show anybody love like this this man is literally literally his sack hangs low enough he can kick it around like they're <laughs> playing over there at the world cup so he's gonna hell he's wanting to get these people out there he's wanting to help i know this for a fact because you know that's why we're here we're here to make everybody and get everybody out there yeah and uh, that that's one thing i've i've noticed about a lot of other DJs or underground radio stations that they're still learning and adapting the same way I did. One, one thing I can tell you, I'm a fucking nerd and I like to read my shit and uh, I'm really about business, bro. Like I know my contracts. I know how to read contracts, write contracts. I know how to help artists get this shit registered. I know about copyrights, trademarks. So I, I sit down with artists. I mean, um, I do, I do charge, either $25, $50, a consultation where I sit down with you and walk you, kind of take you by the hand, just walk you through the bullshit that you don't want to sit there and read about just because it is boring as crap. But <laughs> I definitely help you get everything in place so you can earn those royalties. I mean, that's the whole reason why uh, you, you invest your money into your music because you want to see a return. And the only way you're going to get a return is if you get the promotion. And the only way you're going to get the promotion is if you keep putting money in it. So I definitely help artists get the royalties. I try to help them get, get registered. Not just that. Uh, we help with promotion as well. Because one thing that I've learned about uh, with social media on uh, YouTube and all that good stuff is that it's there. But do you know how to use it? Exactly. And a lot of the times you got to pay to learn how to use that. But in your case... Yeah, you're going to pay that little butt now, but it could save you thousands 
down the road and right. getting screwed over by other people, you know. Right. Which I think I wish would have come to some of the wrestling contracts we had to deal with. I wish you was around then, because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we finally ended up having a lawyer drive with us just to make sure that and to keep my ass out of jail. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of which, now we were talking about the inked up, ink me up. I noticed in that you had some wrestling at the beginning of it. Now, for those of you that don't know, this man right here did the wonderful music that you heard from Miss Melody Madrox, if you've seen us out and about on the, on the scene right here. The Princess of Punishment. That's basically what we called the track, because, you know, <laughs> and it's just, and, and people hear it at the events, they were like, no, they, didn't, they didn't, didn't recognize who you were. Like, this is custom done. This man did this for her, you know? And, dude, how did that come about? Tell me, because I know you. we were talking earlier on, you have another guy you're dealing with, but I want to know about how the whole thing with Melody Madrox came about, the, the, the collaboration so, of what came in your brain. So, so what happened was, well, I don't, I'm not sure how many I actually know, but I'm a huge wrestling fan. When I say wrestling fan, I don't mean like WWE wrestling fan. I mean like underground wrestling where like these, these fools are putting, putting each other through thumbtacks and <laughs> fighting in, <laughs> with barbed wire ropes. And I mean, it, it's intense stuff. And uh, a friend of mine actually showed me uh, Melanie Madrox and um, I saw that I, I saw a few of the videos of her uh, wrestling and putting it down right, and then and then did, did did a couple of Facebook searches and boom, just like that. I was like, "Yo, let me make let me make your theme song." Because I remember somebody to say it's me. Because <laughs> I remember when. I forget exactly what day of the week, but I was at work and I came home. She goes, I got a weird message. I'm like, what do you mean weird message? And she showed it to me. I'm just like, whoa. <laughs> like it, it blew my mind. Cause usually wrestlers or talent will reach out to artists. It's very seldom that you will see an artist reach out to a wrestler. Say, yo, I want to, and I'm like, you're, you're making waves. If, if people are coming to you wanting to do this, you're doing something right. And, you know, it just it, – it, we, we got the track in. We heard it. Ouch. The kids bump it through the house. <laughs> Hold on just one <laughs> second. Somebody's actually want to say something. Yo, thank you for that track, dude. I absolutely love it. My kids still listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> the prince has a punishment. Make it a cameo. So there you go. Now I got to pay her royalties. Damn. Uh. There you go. And, <laughs> and you know, I wanted, I originally wanted to fucking take like video footage of old wrestling matches and make a YouTube video to it. And we still can do it. I just yeah. never got around to actually doing it. And I know at the time, um, you, uh, she, she was telling me to just go on YouTube and kind of rip videos off of YouTube yeah. or whatever. I was like, I don't fucking know how. <laughs> oh, I if I'd if I'd known that, I'd actually sent you the raw file. But I mean, yeah, anytime. Like I said, you have access to it. If you want it, go for it. You know, you're more than welcome to. I see Corey Smith watching. Yes. What's going on, Big Corey? Uh, now I know that you've got another gentleman that you're getting ready to work with when it comes to. A theme track. Yeah. You want to let that one out? Yeah, Seth Anunnaki. Uh, Seth Anunnaki, I did his theme song of, kind of around the same time I did uh, Melanie's theme song. And um, now he's, uh, a, he, of course, he's, he's, he's evolving. He's creating a, kind of a new character, I guess you could say, which is it's, uh, it's kind of cult-related. So we're going really into the depths of, of the darkness with it. It's oh, called wow. Already Dead. And it's going to be a pretty extreme track. Like, it's in your face. Well, man, whenever you I'm get that done, I want to hear it. it. Yeah, you're going to hear it. Trust me, you're going to hear it. And when you do <laughs> you're hear, hear it, it play from all, there. Yeah, so, so what, I'm, what I'm planning to do is uh, 
I'm planning to make a theme song, uh, in, entrance for Seth Anunnaki. Shout out to Anunnaki, man. This kid, he's he's unbelievable, bro. He, this, I never seen a dude fly like this across the ring in a long time. This 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 dude flies. But um, Seth Anunnaki, Anunnaki, <laughs> and um, th- this 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 track is like, yeah, I'm doing a theme song to it. But it's so dope that I have to make an actual song to it as well. So I'm going to get a couple other artists that I think that are just pure, pure wicked. And I'm going to have them feature on it. And uh, oh, yeah. it's going to be full on track on top of just a theme song. Nice. Now, if, for those of you who haven't seen a lot of his episodes here recently, he was he made a comment. You were, you're getting ready to do pretty much like I called it, Showtime at the Apollo. You've got an open <laughs> mic night coming up. Tell us about that, because this is what a lot of the people have been asking. You know, they heard about it, and they were wanting to know more information. What kind of gems can you give me? Come on now. <laughs> all right, so all right, so do you, do you want to go into the, the positive or the negative first? Uh, flip a coin. I don't, let's go negative. Fuck it. All right. I'd rather finish on a high well, note. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Let, let's let's get into some shit. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm to be, as we were just saying, I didn't mean to become a DJ. I didn't mean to work with the radio. I didn't mean to become a promoter. I didn't mean for it to happen, right? I'm I'm I've only wanted to be an artist and stay true to my artistry, and everything else just kind of came with it because my my work ethic is is on point. And uh, like I said, I know my business. So um, to be straightforward with you, Simon, and I'm gonna tell you this, uh, bro- brother to brother to fr- from another, is that I- I'm at a crossroads, bro. Uh-oh. I'm at a crossroads, and I'm like, should I do this or should I not? Because because but what I'm thinking, what I'm thinking is that a lot of these artists aren't ready for this, bro. Like, yeah, I give them an open mic. Yeah, a few, a few will show up. Yeah, a lot of, pro- probably a lot of dope ones will come out of it. You know what I'm saying? And what I'm, what I'm trying to, the reason I'm doing this is because I'm working with an A&R from Sony Music Group. And he came to me because he knows I got venues. He knows I have artists. And he knows I, I can hit the streets and really promote this thing. And... And I'm like, at the same time, I'm like, do I really want to devote my time to this? Because I'm not going to put my own money into bringing this A&R from Sony out to help these artists that don't want to invest in themselves, that don't want to hit the streets and promote themselves, that they're not going to jump on Facebook and do a couple shares every day. They're not going to change their profile picture to the flyer. And to be straight up with you, man, that has been the trend, bro. Like, these artists don't know how to promote themselves. And they that's how I kind everybody of, else to do it. Yeah. And that's that's how I kind of got into the promotional game is I was like, you know what? You do your artistry, bro, because I know that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. And I know promoters out here don't know how to promote. So you do your music, I'll get the people in there, and we'll have a good time. But now I'm at a point where I'm like, this guy wants to bring, he wants to bring a Sony distribution deal to the table, and I'm Ooh. thinking about putting together a hip hop competition, kind of American Idol style, where I have an A and R from Sony, myself, and probably a two two other guest judges who sit there and judge every act on their quality of music, their stage presence, their crowd control. And do you, and on top of that, I have a media company that wants to wants to come to the ad event and film the whole thing and edit it and create a whole Facebook and YouTube video and give all these artists all the promotion in the world. And I'm like, but who is going to pay for it? Me? Yeah, Me? that ain't happening. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, think about it. If I had 16 artists that paid 50 bucks each, 
that's about what eight hundred dollars. That eight hundred dollars could cover the time for that media company, could cover the time for the A and R to come to to have one night in Denver with us. And I mean, are artists even willing to put up fifty bucks to get involved with something like this? So that's where I'm at. So that so the other so, so the positive side, I'm like, how many people have an A and R from Sony talking to them saying, "Yo, let's do a, let's do a hip hop competition. Let's uh let's get let's shine the light on Denver a little bit. Let's see who are, what artists out there hungry enough to make this to make their dreams come to a reality." And I mean, and I mean, being that I have that in my hands, I'm like, I can't let it go. I can't. I can't. But yeah, I'm like. You don't want to lose the opportunity, but are you wanting to risk it and throw it out there just to see what happens? Right. Right. So that's That's where I'm currently at right now. And I'm like, I have the date. I have the venue. I have the A&R ready. I have the media company ready. And I'm just like, all I got to do is make a phone call and I can have a fire made within a few days. And I could be up and moving. But I'm going to be straight up. And if I had all these artists tell me, you you want me to pay? Yeah. I'm like, that, that's going to hurt. That's going to make my good feelers feel bad. You know what I'm saying? I'll be like, I don't yeah. know if I want to feel that way. <laughs> well, here, how about we do this? For the artists out there in Denver that are wanting their – that think they've it's got the – Don't even think just Denver, man. I mean, I'm looking at any artist, fucking Montana, Texas, Tennessee, freaking Wyoming, fucking California. You want to come in here? You want to travel? Fucking get up in here, bro. I mean, this ain't just for Denver. This is for anyone that makes it in this venue on that very day. It could happen. And the why I was doing the open mic is so I ha- I could do an open mic, pick one artist from every open mic, to go in that competition on my dime. Wow. Let's put it this way. If any of you guys are wanting something like this, show this man some love. Comment hashtag real one and why you belong and why you want to see this shit happen. This man is wanting to put out and help you. 50 bucks wouldn't be bad to help, don't you think? For all that exposure. There's been times I have gone... There's been times we have gone to seminars literally just to sit there, not guaranteed a spot on an event. I paid, I think, 50, 60 bucks for a seminar from a guy from Japan. I'm not, I don't want to mention names because I don't want to ruffle feathers. Didn't even get guaranteed a spot on the event. But going out there, having the opportunity to showcase your shit, somebody else seen it, got us booked somewhere else. You know, you learn, you have fun, you go out there and you show this man why – you know, he should be doing this kind of stuff. Why he, why you deserve go out there and bust your ass and hustle and show him, you know, shit, 50 bucks ain't nothing. We could put it up because we know we got what it takes. That's right. That's right. And, and the thing about it is, is that that, that 50 bucks that would come from the artist, it's going to go right back into the event. It's going to go into the promotion. It's going to go into the time. These media boys are going to sit down, edit the videos. Because, I mean, when the when it all said and done and that video hits YouTube and Facebook and all the promo goes out, you're going to be tagged in everything. I mean, your, your Facebook link, your YouTube channel is going to be tagged in everything. So this is going to be ongoing promotion to the end of time. And the reason that we want to even do a video for it is so we can build up hype to do a second one. There I mean, go. we can show with Sony a and that Denver – got to popping, and we do it right, and we have a good fucking turnout the first time, don't you think he's going to want to come back another time? (laughs) And that place packs out, too, and they pay, and, I mean, there's more money coming in. I mean, more to help, you know? And you got to think, because when we did video editing with here on the DD2 Entertainment YouTube page, when we would go to events, we would charge more than 50 bucks. You know, just to edit and commentate, not even adding what all these guys, what they're going to do with everything else. So for these guys that think, oh, 50 bucks is too much, dude, it ain't nothing compared. If you try to go do this yourself, see what happens. See how much you're going to put out on your own dime 
you try to do it yourself. Right. You know, when you can get a big collaboration, everyone pays a little bit less and gets the same out of the deal. Right. And that's where and and I'll be I'll be straightforward and say I kind of had a competitive advantage over other artists just because I'm a salesman by trade. I mean, I've been working talent marketing gigs since I don't know how long. And I used so to you're one of them to assholes door. that call me at two in the afternoon when I'm dead asleep because I work graveyard. <laughs> Hello, Simon. For two hundred and fifty dollars today, you can own this bounce ball boogie G string. You can wear it in a wrestling match. How about this banana hammock for a dollar fifty? Dude, if I was to put that on live, we would be kicked off. I'd be in Facebook jail probably to the end of the next year. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Bounce ball banana hammocks coming soon. You heard it first. See, again, I, I, have the, I get the scoops, man. What can we say? <laughs> but right, but yeah, is there so anything else? Is there anything else you want to get out? I mean, just to – to the fans that are watching this here on Facebook Live that have spent time with us, and I thank everyone for that. They're going to see us on YouTube. What's the one thing, if you could say one thing to everybody? Man, all, all I can say is that as much as, much as I uh, want to do this hip-hop competition, I kind of want to say, and it's kind of focus on myself and focus on making new merchandise and new videos and blah, 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 blah. But the thing that irks me the most is I have an opportunity and I could give other artists an opportunity and it's up, up for grabs. And know, just knowing that, and I just want artists out there to, to realize that if you just be humble and learn and talk to me a little bit, you will see that this shit is real. I mean, I'm not just blowing smoke up your ass. I mean, this is a real opportunity we could get your music out there and push that a little bit further. And that's one thing that I, I kind of strive for is to really help artists get heard and get their brand out. I always say, expand your brand, expand your brand. And not just with music and artists. I mean, I have, I'll help a cupcake shop expand their, expand their business. I'll help a computer nerd, computer store, a computer nerdy store expand their business. I mean, I look for sponsors all the time. Which shout out to Street Motivation Magazine. Y'all been sponsoring the crap out of me. And I know I have an advertisement coming up in your in the next issue of Street Motivation Magazine. So check that out. Horrorcore magazine. We're starting season two here in a couple weeks. Um we're going to start with, with uh, A La Zeal Ilu, which acts AXE. Uh, we're doing an exclusive interview with it, with those guys after the gathering's over. But Horrorcore Magazine, they've been pushing Bounce Ball Boogie for a minute, so I definitely appreciate all you guys over there. And um, our new sponsor is 5280 Inc. 5280 Inc., we're going to be doing a lot of cool things with them. Um, I know we're setting up a music video. So as you, as you heard Simon talk about my song, Ink Me Up, I'm actually creating a whole Ink Me Up compilation where I'm making a whole album dedicated to tattoo artists and the, and the history and love of, ta of tattooery. And I'm, <laughs> I'm going to have a music video with four tattoo artists tattooing me at once. Damn. That's gonna yeah. be a lot of pack. That could be a lot of pain, a lot of fun, and whew, yeah. So fifty-two eighty eight. Look for those boys, man. They're coming up, and uh, once they have everything up and running, I'll be sharing and wearing their crap on everything I do. And uh, sponsors, businesses out there that want to get involved with this competition and everything else, hit me up. Bounce ball boogie b double o g i e at gmail dot com. And we will have all the links to that once we get this sent over to YouTube. Everything will be down there below, guys. Check us out, youtube.com slash the, the letter D, the number two, entertainment. Now, I want to thank you again for coming on here and allowing me to kind of ramble with you, have a lot of fun. With, <laughs> hopefully we got some – and like I said, there's some been some people that are in the comments right now. You got a guy from New Zealand. That just sent you a link. So, 
They said they sent you a link. I don't know if it's for me or you, but you somebody from New Zealand sent in somebody some music. So, I mean, this could be interesting. You know, that's been the most coolest thing about the radio is that we're not just an online radio station. We're an FM two satellite radio, so we're broadcasting worldwide. So New Zealand, Germany, UK. You all can tune in to Bounce 107 and Bounce with me on a daily. We'll have the app. We have the app being developed as we speak. So we're going to be creating a online event for the release of the app, which will be available for a free download. So definitely be on the look. If you join my mailing list, you'll be one of the first ones to know. I should probably say that before I get out of here. Is join the mailing list. Go to my website. And again, Simon, put up the links for me. BounceBallBoogieWoogie.com. That's B O O G I E, bounceballboogiewoogie.com. Or just go to bounce107.com and join the mailing list. If you join the mailing list, we're going to send you an email to download the app before we release it to anyone. Now, I don't know if this is the proper way. I don't know if the New Zealand guys, I don't know if they're the Kiwis or not. I know that's what they call it. Can you see a Kiwi coming out there and kicking ass on stage? <laughs> <laughs> I say Kiwi. I know. I think they're the All Blacks. That's the rugby team. The New Zealand All Black, I believe. And they, if I'm wrong, you punch somebody else because it's it would hurt. So please don't don't hit the money maker. What's left of it? But but okay, I want to thank you one more time. Literally, honestly, it's been a blast. I I was looking forward to this when we first talked about it, and I literally smoked a pack and a half of cigarettes before. And I don't smoke cigarettes. That tells you how damn nervous and excited i was not to screw this up but guys it's i want to thank one. i was hoping to see your sexy mustache right what happened to it oh the beard and mustache that thing um funny story i was tri i was trying to you know even it out and the, <laughs> the fucking guard came off and went zip and <laughs> yeah that's kind of the look i came out of the bathroom and she just went <laughs> Oh, so this is kind of what we've got. <laughs> it's like, whoop, there it is. Um, but everybody, everybody, check us out on the YouTube. We'll have all the links that we've talked about. Miss Melody Madrox, she has been putting some in the comments. This is going to stay up until we get all that squared up. I want to thank my guest tonight, Mr. Bounce Ball Boogie. And if the artists, they know any of your artists that are on, Bounce 107, if you know any of them, hit me up. I've got no problem giving you guys another platform. So please, everyone, have a wonderful night. Be good to yourself. Be respectful to each other. And we'll see you yeah. guys next time. Hey, wait, wait, don't go yet. Whoa, 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 okay. Join me on Spotify. I'm approaching the one-year anniversary of my album, Greed. Which is also God's on his YouTube page. Yeah, that's right, it is. God's Revenge Excites Every Demon. And on July 7th, we're doing a uh, – we're playing the whole album start to finish. I'm re I'm re-showing some interviews I did about the album Greed because uh, that's the first beast. That's the first, <laughs> that's the first head off the beast to be released. And after all this is said and done this year, I'm going back to, into the studio to create the second Dragon Head. And uh, I just want y'all to dive in to Greed because the album has a lot of good messages in it and a lot of good music. And it was all produced by an awesome producer named Savage Soul, which if you go on Spotify, iTunes, look up Savage Soul. He just released a new album called Untamed. And I'm on that album as well on a song called Nice of You to Notice. So I definitely want y'all to take the time and listen to it. It's it's, it's freaking amazing album. The song I did with them is freaking impeccable. So shout out to Savage Soul. Shout out to the beautiful Mercer's Mayhem. If it wasn't for her, I probably wouldn't be doing any of this. So shout out to the beautiful Mercer's Mayhem for holding Bounce Ball Boogie down. Shout out to all six of my wonderful chitlins out there that gave me the motivation and drive to do everything that I do. And all you artists out there that are struggling, that are investing money into your to your craft, and you're kind of lost in the game, hit me up. I'm more than willing to sit down with you and walk you through the business side of it. 
Because this day and age, let me tell you right now, Simon, this day and age, you don't need a you don't need a record contract to be successful. All that record contract is is someone giving you money that you're going to have to pay back. But if you use your own money and you invest it wisely, you could be the next big thing. And there's one more thing you forgot, too. You got to hustle for it, too. You got to bust your ass with it. That's right. Just like this man did. I'm I'm still going to send you that 10-foot Pope hat that we were talking about the other day. (laughs) (laughs) Preach. I'm preaching over here. (laughs) Guys, I want to thank everyone. We're going to bounce. Y'all have a good night. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> huh?